Hi everyone, uh, this is Miss Luca, and these are going to be um, the PowerPoint for the notes that you're going to take for taxonomy. <clears throat> so, taxonomy, putting stuff into groups, that's basically what we're going to spend a short time learning about how science decides what goes into what group. All right, so what is taxonomy? Well, the definition of taxonomy is a system of class classification. And you can see that I have these stars here because this is something that you need to remember. This is one of those things where it's going to be asked on the test. So it's important that you know what taxonomy is. <clears throat> really, it's just organizing things based in, on similar traits. So right here, we have a group of organisms quote unquote or some shapes and right now like I could call any of these things anything that I wanted to we don't there's no system to organize these if you and I both looked at these same shapes we could make two totally different groups based on whatever it was that we just happened to be feeling at the time okay but what taxonomy is, is instead of just doing whatever, we decide on traits and then we divide them. So this first division that I made here was by color. So our first group here is color, All right? I picked out the green ones and I separated them from the red ones, okay? <clears throat> now you can divide them further. So our first division was by color, and then I divided them by shape, okay? So here we have the rectangles, and here we have the triangles, okay, and the greens, and then here we have the red triangle, <clears throat> the red squares, and then we have some extra red circles. We don't have any green circles, okay? <clears throat> so the first division that we had was by color, then the second division was by shape. And like I could have done um, first by color and then whether or not they have corners. So we would have all corners over here. And these two would be in the same group. But these wouldn't be in the same group because they don't have any corners. You can, many people have different ideas about things. <clears throat> so what science did was it went ahead and decided on a, a system that everybody has to use. <clears throat> okay, and the reason that they needed... A system was because everything was a mess. There were people discovering all sorts of things all over the world. Some people were discovering the exact same thing because it lived in two different places. Or they would have common names for the same thing. So like, you know, if one person found this one plant and another person knew that plant, one person would call it one thing and they would call it something else, but they really were talking about the same thing. Okay, it made it very difficult to study and to find out what other people had studied because sometimes you don't want to start from scratch, right? You don't want to have to like, if you're going to write a research paper, actually go research the topic. You're going to look and see what other people have researched and then add to it, okay? So the person that came up with the system of classification that we have now, his name was Carolus Linnaeus. He was from Sweden. He lived in the 1700s, and he was a botanist. He really, really liked plants. He came up with a system that was so good that everyone was like, yep, we're going to use that system. Um, it wasn't perfect. He actually included some categories for, like, mythical animals that, that did not exist, and eventually that got taken away. And people have been deciding and, and changing it around a little bit, but the basis is still the same. Okay, so this is how it works. <clears throat> they took all of life, and they decided that life was going to be divided into three main groups, and we call those groups domains, okay? So at first, they were grouped by either being a prokaryote, which is a bacteria that has no nucleus, or a eukaryote, which is everything else that has a nucleus. But there are so many bacteria that they decided to divide the bacteria into two groups. RK, which means old, 
And then new bacteria, which is just regular bacteria, or sometimes it's called U bacteria. So in the end, we ended up with three domains, RK, bacteria, and eukarya. So um, RK bacteria are bacteria that were alive <clears throat> at the very beginning of life on Earth. They live in really extreme environments, like in volcanoes or really salty water. Um, back, these bacteria are like the bacteria that live inside you and in your digestive system and your reproductive system. <clears throat> uh, they're the ones that kind of are newer, regular bacteria. And then eukarya, <clears throat> which are the eukaryotes, and that's literally everything else <clears throat> that's not a bacteria. So bacteria takes up two thirds of life in our classification system. There's a lot of bacteria, okay? So then we take those three groups and we d divide those three groups into six subgroups and those subgroups are called kingdoms, okay? So domain is first and kingdom is second, okay? The kingdoms for bacteria were easy, um, RK, are just called RK bacteria, and then bacteria are their kingdom is bacteria. Ooh, really creative, okay? But eukarya has so much diversity that it had to be divided into four main groups, and they decided on those groups based on things like um, the type of cells that the organisms had, um, how they get energy, how they reproduce. Um, whether they have like only one cell or multi cells, things like that. And then the, those kingdoms are animalia, which is our kingdom, um, plantae, which is plants, fungi, which is fungus, and protista, which are kind of like um, the junk drawer, like anything that doesn't fit into those other three kingdoms, we stick it there. Uh, sometimes they're like single celled organisms that do things like photosynthesis, or um, they're really primitive single-celled organisms like euglena or um, paramecium, those kind of things, amoebas. Okay, those, these four are all eukarya because they're all eukaryotic cells. They all have a nucleus, okay? Then we take those kingdoms and we keep going down. So we divide those kingdoms into a subgroup called a phylum. So if domain's one, kingdom's two, then phylum is three. And then we take those phylums and we divide them up into classes. We take those classes and then we divide them into orders. We take the orders and divide them into families. Take the families, divide them into genuses. And then we divide the genuses into specific species. And this, these last two specifically are what we end up using for the, na the scientific names of organisms, which we will get to more in depth next time. Okay, but when you hear somebody, um, someone says that a human is a homo sapien, homo is the genus. Let me see if I can write it. All right. Homo is the genus. And then... Sapien is our species, okay? So there's also other kinds of homos. <laughs> um, instead of homo sapiens, there's homo erectus or homo habilis. Those are different species of, of humans, but we all belong to the same genus, okay? As you move down the hierarchy, when you go down this way, you get into smaller and smaller and smaller categories categories. So this is small and this is big. Oops. Okay. But the smaller the category is, the more of them you have. Okay. So this one, we have more categories. I'm sorry. I'm writing with my mouse. It's very difficult. All right. So the smaller you get, you have more categories. And the bigger you are, you have less categories. Okay, so we only have three domains. That's the biggest one. We only have three categories. Kingdom's a little bit smaller, but we still only have six. Species, there's millions and millions of species. So 
the smaller you get, the more categories that you have. On the, bo on the bottom of your notes, you have a space to practice listing some characteristics of the different groups that we talked about. Okay, so Kingdom Plantae, you should be able to figure out two characteristics that you know plants have, something special about plants that most other things don't do. Um, bacteria, what's special about bacteria versus mammals? Okay, mammals are us. Things that are uh, warm blooded, they give birth to live young. We have um, specialized ears. And then genus Felis, Felis are all of the cats. So list two characteristics about cats that you know just because they're cats, right? Okay, um, once you're done with that, you're gonna work on the activity that I've provided for you and this is going to go on page 82 in your notebook.